My mom makes the best chicken pot pie, and it's so good because she makes a really good chicken stew. Because she starts off with a really tasty rotisserie chicken, and then she uses fresh vegetables that she's roasted with herbs and spices. And that's the key to a great pot pie, is to first start off with an amazing chicken stew. Hi guys, I'm Madeline here at Lakeside Table, and today we're making chicken pot pie, and we're going all out for this one. We'll be using our own homemade chicken broth in a velote sauce we've already made to give it some body, and lots of fresh veggies to bring it to life. But if you wanna push the easy button and take a few shortcuts, don't worry about it. There is no problem in pushing the easy button. In fact, I've got a shortcut myself and I use a store-bought pie crust. If you wanna make your own pie crust, go for it, but I'm using a store-bought one. Okay, so after you have your mise en place together, go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Then melt a couple of tablespoons of butter in a large saucepan over medium-high heat. After the butter foam subsides, add the green beans and diced carrots. Cook these until they're barely tender and the colors are bright. Add the diced onion, diced celery, and two tablespoons dried Italian seasoning. This is optional, but I highly recommend it. And cook it for five minutes until the onions are soft. Then stir in the peas, corn, milk, and chicken. Now we're ready to add our three cups of velote sauce. Now, if you haven't made velote sauce before, I'll put a link to a step-by-step -step video that'll walk you through it. But real quickly, this is what you're gonna do. This sauce starts with a roux of equal parts unsalted butter and flour. Cook this down for two to three minutes to cook off the pasty flour taste. Then whisk in two cups of chicken or fish stock. Bring it up to a boil and then immediately reduce the heat to a gentle simmer. To enhance its flavor, simmer a little onion, white pepper, one or two cloves, kosher salt, and a bay leaf in it for 10 to 15 minutes. Just that little amount of time makes a big difference. To make it smooth and velvety, strain it through a fine mesh strainer. Okay, now that we've got everybody in our velouté sauce getting happy, flavors are coming together, this is a really good time to go ahead and taste your chicken stew and then adjust the seasonings if it needs that. Mm. Mm. That's pretty nice. But it does need a little bit of pepper and about a half teaspoon of salt. And then go ahead and let this simmer for another 15 minutes. For the crust, and yes, this is my shortcut, cut circles out of your dough a half inch larger than your oven safe soup bowls. When your stew is ready, fill your bowls with stew, cover them with the dough, cut a few slits and brush with milk. Place the bowls on a baking sheet and bake them for 30 to 40 minutes or until the crust is golden brown. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Or hot. <laughs> that is so good. I mean, it's like one of the most amazing comfort foods on the planet. Right here. So good. I want to like get into it even though it's super hot. <laughs> Flaky, crispy crust. Thick, creamy chicken stew. And look at all these vegetables. You can make the chicken stew a good five days in advance if you want to. Uh, just keep it in the refrigerator in an airtight container. It also freezes really, really well for up to six months. Just make sure before you bake it like this that you reheat the stew. That way, when it comes out of the oven, it is piping hot. So thank you guys for hanging out with me here at Lakeside Table. Remember, this recipe is also in my cookbook, Lakeside Table Sauces, which you can get at my blog, lakesidetable.com. So get yourself the hard copy or the digital copy, whatever you want, and then come on back for more videos, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys. And then 
and I'm gonna wait for this to cool off. I wanna eat it. <laughs> oh, hot.